What's up, guys? This is Passionate Business Analyst, and today we have a discussion about another business analysis technique. Crowd metrics is an essential technique for every business analyst role, and it's must have in your toolkit if you work with software solution. So, what is crowd metrics? In the context of software systems, there is lots of information flowing around, and many people are doing something with that information, thus creating a variety of use cases. To perform these use cases, users do what called operation. They create and update entities, they view data created by other people, and sometimes they just want to clean up things around by deleting what's not needed anymore. Those four operations, create, read, update, and delete, they compose an acronym CRUD, which is the heart of the technique we are talking about. To begin understanding CRUD, let's look at each operation and related examples of use cases. Create is when nothing exists in the system and you want it to be there. For example, you want to start posting your pictures on Instagram. And the first thing you want to do is to create an account. Before you do that, there is no entity example like Yuri Goman in the system and no record in the database. As soon as you fill out the form and click, your account is created. Right after that, you could do what you wanted in the first place. Post a picture maybe of your cat, like I did years ago. Same as with registration. Posting is another example of create operation, by the way. Posts, reels, stories, going live, all of them are ways to create an example of the post in the system. After you post something, you may want to go and look at the pictures of other people's cats to make sure yours the prettiest. You go to search, you enter cat pictures, and you have a feed full of cute furry friends images. What you do here is you view the feed, or in other words, you perform the read operation with the informations are the user created by pulling that information from the database based on your search request. If you later choose a specific image and view its details, you perform another use case related to the read information operation. By the way, if you push the like button or you leave a comment, you will create records in the database tables related to those actions. Thus, you will perform create operations while reading the information. Now, edit. Everything you do to change the information you previously created is editing. You may want to, for example, replace your profile picture to post a new selfie. Or you want to edit one of your previous comments to fix the spelling. Or maybe you want to change the bio. They all are examples of editing. Most of the time, you will be allowed to edit only the information you created, unless you have some sort of admin permissions. What exactly will be allowed to edit, like with other operations, creating, deleting? It depends only on how the system designer sees it fit in the common sense of the application. Finally, delete. If you posted the wrong picture, for example, someone else's cat instead of yours, and you do not want your cat to find out, you can always delete the post. This operation will remove the post from the database and no one will be able to see. Usually, that's it. In some systems though, and this is like a growing trend, delete operations do not remove the information from the database, but they rather mark it as deleted or even go further and encrypt everything. The reason for that is that sometimes deleting the single records uh, may cause the system crash because of the strong relationship between different records. Or it may affect the statistics, which is today a big thing, as you know. That's why sometimes delete operations are update operations, in fact, hiding under another name. Now that we understand the core of the technique, we can talk about creating the CRUD matrix. So the CRUD matrix is a two-dimensional table showing the user permissions to access specific information and which CRUD operations users can perform with that data. You can use the CRUD matrix not only for software though, you can also use it to show which processes instead of users have the create, read, update and delete rights, like for system features or different processes, and by that depicting which processes trigger access to data. What's interesting about the CRUD matrix is that it has a sibling which is called race matrix, and those two are basically two representations of another technique which is called roles and permissions matrix. I will also be making a video about races soon, so make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to catch the video later. There are four steps to creating the CRUD matrix for your project. Step one, gather all the entities you want to put into the table. Step two, write down the user roles you want to create the matrix for. Step three, define all the use cases you want to cover. And step four, start building the matrix with all the scope you have. 
you can do a variety of CRUD matrices depending on the focus you want to put into the document. Let's start with the most common one, Role Entity CRUD Matrix variant. In this case, your goal is to display which user role can do which stuff with the different entities. Put roles as columns and entities as rows. You can do either way, but you usually have fewer roles than entities, so the way I suggest it is more convenient. At the intersection, you will want to write down all the operations your users can do with an entity. This variant is a permission matrix that helps designing the user access management system. If there are child entities and the roles have different operation access to them, you may specify those specifics in each of the cells. The second option is the role operation table. Put roles and operations into roles and columns as you like, depending on the amount of roles. At the intersection, put entities. In this case, you can quickly get a list of entities for each role for specific operations. This convenience has a considerable disadvantage, as you have to duplicate each entity multiple times, which is not critical though if the system is small. The third option is to put operations and entities into columns and rows while putting roles at the intersection. Readers can use this one to quickly understand who can access which entity. Same as the role operation, it's bulky and requires additional thinking resources to process, but may be useful in some situations. The fourth option differs from others. Here, you will put use cases as rows and roles as columns. Mostly, you will not use operations names here, as the use case names should explain the operations themselves, but if they are not, you could always add operations in the parenthesis next to the use case name to clarify what's happening. At the intersection, put a plus or yes or something else you'd like to show which feature is available to which user. Finally, you can create even more focused versions. For example, you may create a CRUD matrix for a single entity if your system has too many roles to track who has access to what. Or you can go further and define access and available operations even on a field level, like if the user can see some field but only the admin can update it. The last one is very useful for enterprise solutions, by the way, where the businesses usually require high configurability. As you see, the CRUD matrix is a simple technique that everybody can master in just under 10 minutes, like you did. Yet, it is a valuable technique, especially when you combine it with analyzing user flows within the system, what actors and roles are involved, and when you want to see the high-level picture of the system access management. I'd say that the CRUD matrix has only one downside. It is a table, and you need to compose it manually. It's not a huge deal, though, if you have a small project. But for large-scale system, you need to use something more sophisticated, like uh, ClickUp or Jira. And that's it about the CRUD matrix. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that you liked it and found something interesting for yourself. And if you did, don't be shy and check other content on my channel.